Welcome to Silver Dollar City, everyone. Um, this is basically like my other home park now. Uh, if you've never been here, I can show you around. <laughs> Shut uh, up. I look back at my hand at this point. I'm basically basically a, a local. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very brisk March morning here at Silver Dollar City for the grand opening of Fire in the Hole. It's me today. We're gonna ride it for our first time. Uh, we haven't seen anything of what it looks like. This is gonna be really, really exciting. I just hope the fire warms me up. That's my the main fire from right the now. hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we visited here in August, we got to do a construction tour of it. So, mm -hmm. like, that's what first got us, like, really excited for this project. Silver Dollar City is uh, redoing the original fire in the hole that they had. Uh, they said that the old one was really outdated, so they just built an entire brand new building, brand new roller coaster track, updated theming, and they spent $30 million to do it, which is very, very impressive. Yeah, and, like, it's not, like, a super crazy roller coaster if you've done the original. Uh, it's been now redone by RMC, which is really cool. All new trains, onboard audio. But like the thing that makes it is like the theming and everything. And that was what we did not get to see because that hadn't been done yet when we did construction. So all that's gonna be a surprise, so yay. So media day is taking place on a day that Silver City is not open to the public. So we're just walking through the park and we're the only ones here. We got the place to ourselves. That's crazy. So we've made it to the former Fireman's Landing. Uh, that's what it used to be called prior to the season. Now that Fire in the Hole is back here, which is a relocation from where it used to be down near kind of like Powder Keg. They've renamed this area the Fire District because there's a whole new section down here. Just past the train crossing, we have a plaza for Fire in the Hole. So you can see they've completely disguised the show building here by adding a bunch of facades. We have Ozark Insurance Co., Firefighter Supply Company, Flanders, that's a nice Easter egg right there. Applying your firefighter needs, yeah, really, really nice. Unfortunately, if you wanted to get insurance here, you actually couldn't because it appears they've gone to fight the fire. <laughs> this looks great. I love how they've just fit everything in with the rest of the park. Like, it doesn't look new at all, and I mean that in the best way possible. Yeah, it like blends perfectly. I, I actually, when we walked through the, the old part of it, I was like, wow. This looks great. And they're like, like I'm Sarah, like, I know that. I know that because I'm a regular. No, um. at Silver Dollar City, they do like touch-ups to everything. Like they <laughs> want to make sure everything looks pristine. It's, it's the Disney effect, right? It's like like when the park, yeah, when the park is closed, you just like, you know, make sure everything uh, looks great. Like there haven't been millions of guests walking around. It, everything always looks very pristine here, but this area looks so cute. And I want to ride the ride. Can we do that? We can go ride the ride. Okay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so here is our main entrance. Look, they've rolled out the red carpet for us. That is awesome. And we just got to talk about the sign. Look at this, it is actually on fire. And actually you can see that they have like a full cutout silhouette of a building on fire. That is just like a really, really cool fact. This ride is dedicated to the heroes of today who spark the heroes of tomorrow. The Heroes Flame honors the volunteers who quietly serve our communities every day. That's awesome. New RMC train. New RMC train. This is so weird because I'm used to like big old thing you gotta pull down. Right, right. Well, and it's just the lap bar. There's no seatbelt okay. or anything. So this is the Verify. That's the Verify. So it should yes. be, in theory, pretty accommodating to oh, a, yeah. a large amount of people. Yes, I would say so. Walking through the main entrance, you can see to the left, that's where standby is. To the right, Trailblazer. We have a fire chandelier. Then the original pumper model. As you're walking in, they have noticed, remember, no loose items allowed. On board delivery bay to the left. And then here's our station. Hey, here we go. We're in the back row for our first ever ride here on Fire in the Hole. That's the onboard audio. First RMC to have onboard audio. That's yeah, cool. like I knew it had it, but I forgot. Well, you can already hear it a lot better than the original. Yeah. It's very well themed in here. It looks so much better. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. It looks so That's much fun. better, but I don't feel like they overly modernized it, which still feels like the original. Right. With right. like some modern flair. Hey, there we go. There's Ben Flanders' booty. Oh ben my Flanders God. is still missing his pants. Oh, look, that screen is cool. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, I saw there were a couple of uses of screens, but screens are used as like, an enhancement. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, it still feels like the original, but it's like done up. You know what I mean? Oh, this looks great. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. This looks great. 
I love how long of a ride this is. I know, I know. It's the well, best. it's meant to be a relaxing attraction, you know, like for when it gets really cold here in the Ozarks or when it's like a million degrees, you know? I'm, I'm relaxed. Wow. Yeah, see, that looks yeah. great. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it's, I mean, though. It's like, it's, it's, it's enhanced and modernized, but it still feels like a classic. Yeah, but it's a really creative use to get that fire effect. All it is is just a sheet that they're just going like this to. Oh, oh, oh. hey, that looks way better. Oh. <laughs> okay, that looks cool. It's very smooth. The, the old track had like a, this rustic feel. This is very, very smooth. This is where we walked on. We walked on this section. Oh, yeah. When we were here in August. That's cool seeing it finish. Oh, that's loud. Oh, look at that train effect. Whoa! Whoa! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Oh! There's some water. <laughs> you get splashed, actually. Not, not bad. Wow. Yeah, that looks I, great. I remember seeing this part when it was under construction, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that looks really that nice. That was great. Oh. Yeah. That was awesome how, like, it paid homage so well, because, I mean, it is not, story, yeah, so well, it's not that different from no. the original. Like, if you, if for people who are worried about, like, you know, nostalgia and everything, like, this is, this is perfect. Yeah. This is exactly what you're looking for. But I think that was important that they didn't just overhaul into, like, this super yeah. modern thing. You see the screen right there, everyone cheering and dancing? That's, that was filmed, like, outside of the ride. Those are all, like, characters from, like, the saloon show. I love that. But That's yeah, a funny it, it, it keeps it, you know, where people who grew up with this ride are probably not going to be, like, they ruined it, like they, they killed the class. Like no, it's not at all. Yeah. It's great. Disney could never. <laughs> oh. Another Easter egg from the original Fire in the Hole. A lot of you guys are gonna recognize this. They brought this over from the queue of Fire in the Hole 1.0 and now it is at the exit of 2.0. So now we're backstage of Fire in the Hole in the building. We have to get some cool views of the attraction. This is cool. So right here is the scene of Ned Flanders looking for his pants. Right behind us where the transfer track is. That's really cool. Where they store the vehicles in it. We have a very special guest here. All of you know him, but you might not all know his face. This is the man, the myth, the legend, the guy behind RCDB, AKA the Coaster Bible. Dwayne Martin. <laughs> I don't think we've had you on the channel before. We've known you for a long time. Yeah, uh, yes. Great to see you again. What do you think of Find the Hole? Ah, uh, great. It, uh, it's one of those rides, we've been on rides before, and the new version is always kind of a letdown from the you know classic feeling we of the all old know the version. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this one is not that. You're going to forget about that old fire in the hole once you ride this one. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you're, you're a coaster enthusiast like us. How weird is it riding an RMC that's not a thrill ride? Right? Yeah. It's uh, like how, it's the only one that doesn't have the shin guards on it, for right, example. Right. It, there's no lift hill. It's just a, a weird RMC, but it's a blast. Yeah, yeah. I thought they did a really nice job Hep with like the theming. And yeah, everything. most like, heavily themed RMC. We could go on these for all day long <laughs> if you want. Yeah, yeah. All right, and the man himself, Darren here, president of RMC. Uh, how's it feel being back here at Silver Dollar City in the grand opening of Fire in the Hole? Super awesome. I got to give uh, Silver Dollar City credit for just throwing a wonderful event with the band, custom songs, great food. For me, it's incredible because I remember two and a half years ago when we first met with the team and you know discussed the concept. And to watch it go from you know piece of paper, uh, and you know also you know seeing the old ride that we had here, but watching it you know step by step come to life has just been an incredible experience. And getting to ride it today for the first time exceeded my expectations. You know this was always a good ride, but to see it refreshed I think is wonderful. Uh, I think they've really paid a good homage to the original ride. I'm super proud of what our team has done. Um, you know developing our first power coaster, our first dark ride really pushes us into a new space. Um, we still love doing the big, giant, uh, high-intensity coasters, 
but you know we are a business so we have to be able to kind of have you know level out things a little bit so having you know the power coaster in our portfolio having the raptor in our portfolio having the new moose family coaster in there plus you know bringing larson on board and we're in the process of modernizing those rides i think this gives us a great uh package allows us to work with parks and you know and really helps us leverage our, our innovative engineering team that we've got. Awesome. Well, you guys did a great job. Thank you so much, Darren. Yay, Darren! See you. Thank you, everybody. All right, we got Tim Baldwin here from Amusement today. Uh, great to see you. What did you think of Fire the Hole? You know, I love that they preserve the ride. You know, it's such a cherished classic for over half a century, for more than 50 years. And according to Brad Thomas, the park president, he said from their guest research, it was the number one attraction that they can never take away. Wow. So, you know, they honored that and they owned that and said, okay, we got to do it right because they knew it was reaching the end of its lifespan. And they did a marvelous job. It's great. Everything you loved about the old one, it's in there. But then you go through, it's like, oh, that's new. Oh, this is cool. Look how they did that. You know, and the onboard sound. It's it's just everything you love, but more. Well, and it's still, they keep that with a, being a family attraction. Like, yes. you can have every member of the family enjoy that. Right. And with the age of uh, the history of this ride, it's now a multi-generational ride. Sure, this is brand new, but at the same point, you had... Uh, people who rode the originals kids that now bring their kids and their grandkids and you all get to ride it together and you only have to be as tall as a yardstick I mean everyone can ride it, it's just a perfect ride for everybody so they have official fire in the hole ice cream is crispy marshmallow graham crackers and chocolate ribbons it's like a s'more it's oh, fantastic it's like a s'more because of fire no it's gone oh no this would You're be gonna have to get the bone took it. This would be great over like hot brownies. Yes. Oh. And when you're from Wisconsin, you learn how to chew ice cream. You people just don't know how to do this. We don't know how to eat ice cream. A lot. Yeah. Feel attacked. And you've got the <laughs> you've got the teeth that can take chewing ice cream. I can't do that. Yeah. He bites into ice cream. It's horrible. I don't know. It's fine to me. I found what I'm getting today. I just gotta my, find adult size. My first coaster. Oh, come on, that's hilarious. That is funny, but they definitely aren't gonna have a size that's for you. It's meant for kids. Well, it could be like a crop top. <laughs> like a really crop top. Okay, well, in all seriousness, uh, here's I some of the shirts serious. that some of you uh, theme park fans might be interested in. I like that, what they've done here. They also have shirts for the original Fire in the Hole, and that one is really classy. Oh my god. There's a Dalmatian here. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out here today to the newly incorporated Fire District. Flank behind us here is the brand new $30 million largest indoor coaster in America's heartland, Fire in the Hole. Over 50 years ago, we created the, new, the original Fire in the Hole. That ride welcomed five generations of riders, mothers and daughters, fathers and sons, kids and grandparents, and everyone in between. Because of the memories that were made on that ride is the reason we have this new ride standing right here behind us today. As we know from our marketing research, the consumer research that we do, we knew that the number one sacred cow of this park, so as we knew that we needed to replace the former ride, we had to pay tribute to that ride because of its just connection to this park. We have told a story for 50 something years of a real night that happened in the 1880s. Marvel Cave at one point was a mine in the 1880s. Bald Knobbers, which was a group of vigilantes that actually um, rode through this part of Southern Missouri, they actually came in and they burned the town to the ground. It sits here right in the middle of the fire district. The fire district has been expanded to include Flanders Dry Goods. If you don't know who Red Flanders is, you're gonna know once you ride this ride. Red Flanders has been looking for his pants for 51 years. <laughs> the dang bald knobber stole his pants. And so guess what? As we were thinking of the fun of this ride, we're like, okay, well, obviously red has to be an important part of the ride. Wouldn't it be fun if we did a Flanders Mercantile? So we opened up a little Flanders Mercantile shop over here, and guess what? Top selling item for the first two weeks of the season, red Flanders pants. As we look at the future, the street that's in front, 
of Fire in the Hole will connect to what we call temporarily Pumpkin Plaza as we have new ideas for that specific area. And that then flows into Grand Exposition, which connects all of this. So not only have we opened up the new Fire in the Hole, but we've opened what will be a new street into Silver Dollar City that connects this part of town to the other part of the city as well. I also want you to know that um, Silver Dollar City has 1,200 acres to our west. There is less than 200 acres that we occupy over here with the parking lots and the park itself. And it's taken us 63 years to get this much. And we got 1,200 adjacent acres to the west. So if you've got a few hours, I'm going to walk through our plans today. <laughs> Not really. But I say all of that to say on this opening day of Fire in the Hole, it's an opening day for this new ride, for the new generations of this ride, but also for lots of announcements in the future. All right, here we go, Mayor Brad. Three, Three two, two, one. one. There we go, Fire in the Hole is now open and we have a flood of people all going in to experience the attraction for the first time. The line for Fire in the Hole now extends into the outdoor exterior queue. Popular ride. Yeah. Firecracker chicken bites. Ooh, we had these uh, on the announcement day. Yeah. Yeah, these were fantastic. Uh, wouldn't be silver dollar city without skillet. And then lemon butter cake. Oh my gosh. All right, I think I need to save that for last. They gave the man himself his own store. Check it out. You can get the pants. It's like good subtle merchandise. It's like an if you know, you know kind of thing. So here we are at the front of Silver Dollar City as we are concluding our day at uh, the grand opening of Fire in the Hole. I mean, what a fantastic time. The ride turned out really, really well. Uh, we concluded with three rides on the attraction. Yeah. So that'd be back row, middle, and then uh, I got a front seat ride. Mm -hmm. That was by far the wettest seat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't get wet, so I got like a sprinkle. I sat on the left side, so like my left pant leg and my left shoe got wet, but it wasn't like, it's not Mystic River Falls, so yeah. you're you're fine. It's, it's, no sharks in here. No sharks. Yeah. No. No. They're definitely still at Mystic. They never migrated. Are you over. sure? I yeah. mean, what do shark migration patterns look like? I guess we could go check. Anyways, um, yeah. Everyone at Civil Dollar City who poured like time into this, people at RMC, uh, they they all should be really proud of themselves. Like, yeah. It, it turned out really really nice. This is gonna be one of those attractions that is gonna be a true classic for generations to come. Oh, totally. I mean. The thing is, like, it's no small task to appease people who have such a nostalgic connection to a ride. You know what I mean? And we see that a lot with, like, Disney attractions specifically, where people are, like, they have, like, this very strong emotion, emotional bond with it. And, like, if whenever you're, like, okay, we're going to change it, people are automatically very, like, dismissive of it or, like, defensive and, like, Ooh, I don't know, like, why don't you just leave it alone and, like, you know, there are times where I think that that's appropriate, but then there's times like this where the old one was just, it was falling apart. The building, it literally, it can't be reused because it's in such bad shape. And like, they're like, well, we have to get rid of it. We have to, you know, if we want this ride to stay, it's going to have to change. And I think that the fact that every person that is walking out of there that has done the original is happy, stand, like shows how well they really did do at making this like a, a real renewed version of a classic. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't hear a single negative response no. after after writing this. And the thing is that you have to have your expectations in the right place. Like, know what you're getting into. This is still fire in the hole. Like, the scenes are almost identical. They're just renovated into, like, the 21st century. But they, but they didn't even go, like, over the top to where it, it feels, like, dramatically different. Like, all the animatronics are still yeah. very simple or they're statues. Yeah. And so they, they kept that old charm in place. Honestly, my main question at this point is what they're going to do with the plot of land that the old one occupied because the building's still there. It is on flat ground and it's prime real estate. It's right near Powder Keg. Yeah. Like you could do 
some really cool stuff in that area. So well, what's going to happen? Yeah, and this park it literally has no problem with investing a ton of money into it because clearly they have a lot of loyal park goers and people visiting from all over the place. And, you know, they just said that they have 1,200 acres of unused land right now and they're only using 200, period. Yeah. And I'm like, that's insane. Like, they could build, like, so many more. Six more. Six more Silver Dollar Cities. No, it'll probably be like, I imagine we'll see some resorts pop up. Yeah. I, I feel like probably. that would be the, the no-brainer here. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Or some serious park expansion, man. Yeah. Yeah, they, they could do some cool stuff. Th- th- this park's future is really, really bright. Yes. So come out here to Silver Dollar City, check out the new Fire in the Hole, and make sure to stay tuned for it here at Coast News. We'll see you next time.